So now I'm pleased to share with you an update on a really important partnership that we have. So three years ago, John Tomlin stood on stage at the 3D Experience Forum to give his vision for a 3D Experience Center in Wichita. Wichita, well, who knew that Wichita was the aviation capital of America, if not the world? Well, you know, I'm here to tell you that that vision from three years ago is now a reality. Let's take a look. Creating digital continuity from one end of the aerospace process to the other end and introducing all of the technology that sits around that, whether it be virtual reality, automation, 3D printing, or additive layer manufacturing. All of these technologies are here, and these are the technologies that are being introduced to the aerospace and defense sector today. Furthermore, since we have a massive physical test infrastructure here as well, and a very close collaboration with the regulatory authorities, gives us the opportunity to industrialize and regulate those new practices and processes so they can be used in production. Our vision is to proliferate centers such as these around the world, and ultimately our expectation is that as engineering proliferates, as cloud computing proliferates, collaboration won't be the same. We're going to crowdsource our engineering. We're going to crowdsource our supplies. We're going to crowdsource a lot of what takes place in a very bespoke way today. These centers such as this become the test nodes, the fabrication nodes on that global network. So our expectation is that these ultimately will become factories for online content and online services to a global collaboration hub, which is a 3D experience platform. Wow, so did you guys notice that all of the robots had names? So it was Razzle and Dazzle and Rock'em and Sock'em, but Ash and Bishop are still my favorite. So, today, it's my honor to welcome back to the 3D Experience Forum stage, John Tomlin, Vice President, Research and Technology Transfer at Wichita State University, and the Executive Director of NIAR, the National Institute for Aviation Research. Welcome, John. Thanks, Dean. How you doing? Good. That's great. So, you know, one of the very first things I did when I came on board at Dassault System was to come out to Wichita and visit the Innovation Campus. So when I was walking around, I noticed that you guys had taken a very different and unique approach to education. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Sure, Dean. You know, one of the things that, that we had to do when we, we, the Innovation Campus is 130 acres. What you saw on the, on the video was just our first part, but we had to listen to industry. And what industry was telling us is they wanted a workforce different. They no longer wanted to invest two years in the training of a new graduate before they become productive. And so that really challenged us to think about things differently. So two years. And as I go across industry, even uh, across bigger industries in aerospace, that two-year figure. And so we came up with a model. We call it the applied learning model. And the applied learning model, what it does is it inserts the student. When they're in a freshman, it inserts the student with companies on campus, it's different than a co-op. So people say, oh, well, this is just a co-op program. It's not a co-op program. They're working the full time along hand in hand with engineers with all the tools, especially like tools from the 3D Experience Center that they don't learn in textbooks. And another thing that the industry wanted was a low cost workforce. They're chasing low cost workforce everywhere around the country. Students are a pretty low cost workforce and you can get them to produce. That's great, great. So, you know, back in the Dean 1.0 days, <laughs> you know, when I was a materials engineer, I was working in a chemical plant, one of my favorite materials to work with was this really heavy metal called Inconel. And it's really difficult to work with. When I came over to Wichita, you guys were 3D printing. You guys were 3D printing Inconel. So that's just, you know, cutting edge technology. So maybe you can tell the folks a little bit more about some of the really advanced cutting edge work you're doing, particularly in the area of additive manufacturing. Sure. So, so when we, I mean, working with Dassault Systems, we laid kind of the 3D Experience Center out in Wichita. And we wanted to really focus on five areas. And five areas is first, materials. 
I mean, we wanted to really challenge the paradigm of, I got a problem, let's go select some materials from a book. Well, what about if we could do it the opposite way? What about if we could design the material to solve the problem with virtual materials? So that's, that's piece number one. Piece number two is linking the simulation part. So you got simulation with the optimization all the way down to the manufacturing floor, as you kind of saw in Ron's presentation too. That's a key. Then the other part is people that, people that are using this and, and doing a, a quick project, they want to see, they want to touch something. So we wanted to put in a manufacturing center that is uh, reflective of what a future factory would look like. So we, we created the, what we call the MRAM. It's a multi-robotic uh, advanced manufacturing system. And you saw pictures of it on there that Dean said had names. So, so uh, this system could do additive and subtractive at the same time. And then as Dean said, then the fourth thing is, is additive, additive printers. And these are not the things you see at Best Buy or the Stratus machines. We wanted to link we wanted to be able to make a part that's 16 feet by 6 feet by 6 feet and do it quick. So we were able to do that. And then we have the metal part. And then we're working with technology, the, the, the new way of printing too, just printing different materials. All right. So, John, I know you've come a long way in the last three years getting this center built and off the ground, but I know you're not done. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've got planned for the future of the Innovation Campus? Sure, so, so I, I kind of put these in four buckets right now. The first bucket is we gotta get the workforce piece right. I mean, that is our future. And I mean, that, uh, so training students about things that are not learned in a textbook. I mean, industry doesn't want that anymore. You wanna hire people with experience. Well, I, I, we need to get those students with the tools necessary to solve the problems. Those you can't get in a college textbook. I mean, those you pick up afterwards. So what we want to do is insert those down. So that's bucket number one that we really want to focus on. Bucket number two is really, really it's kind of what Ron showed, is the 3D experience platform is really a game changer, especially in the aerospace industry. And I tell people this. I, uh, I had a reporter in about three weeks ago, and I took him through the, the 3D Experience Center. And, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm an engineering nerd geek, and I used all these big words. And he said, you know, my, my readers aren't going to understand what you're telling me. So can you put it in layman's terms? And I told him, I said, it's basically like giving an engineer his favorite wish. You know, think, think about if you got a wish, a genie came to you with a bottle, and you rubbed it. Most of you... I, I could probably get a majority of you with the one wish being able to see into the future, especially when it came to lotto numbers next, drawn on Saturday. I mean, everybody would, would, would like that. So what, what the 3D Experience platform does, it lets you see into the future, as Ron said. I mean, we're designing a factory before we lay one brick, before we pour one ounce of concrete. And we can take it from a design and bring it all the way down to the factory floor. And then look at things like tack time, especially in aerospace, tack time, uh, rigging that you need, especially when you have a, a, a big fuselage. I mean, how, how many cells do you actually need? And production rate. If you think about production rate in aerospace, and just think about the, the, the 737 or, or the A320. Those are, I mean, we're going to produce 20, 30 a month. And it's not really, if I say, well, let's, let's produce 80 a month, you'd want to go back and change the design. So that's what the 3D expenditure allows you to do, is actually to, to look into the future. And then that third bucket is, um, is um, being able to uh, uh, really challenge the timeline. It's challenging the timeline. So industry comes to us and they say, hey, we want to do this new innovation. We want to solve a new problem. We want, we want, and we, we want to do this. Okay, three to five years, typical timeline. Well, what we want to do is compress that down to 90 days. And then you'd say, 90 days, really? And so, so you know, we, we opened the center in, in April, and we've had multiple industries through there. And then I had a large OEM come through, and they said, hey, John, I'm going to take you up. I'm going to call your bluff is I want to challenge you. So this is one of the greatest satisfactions so far that I had with the 3D Experience Center. His, they, they said, we're going to design, I'm not going to mention the company, but you all know them. And the, the part they gave me, I wanted an easy part. They gave me a complex part. And they said, Let, let's see what you can do. What we want to do is change this paradigm. We want to design a whole new part. And we want to do it, let's see if you can do it in 90 days. 
So we got a group of engineers from, from, from their shop, combined them with Dassault engineers, combined them with students and my staff, and guess what? We did it in 84 days. Wow. 84 days. And they walked away. <laughs> they walked away with a full-scale, kinematically working prototype, as big as this stage right here, in 84 days. So that, that's when I knew we had something. That fourth bucket is kind of unexpected. Is most of you are engineers, we, we, we see what Ron did with, with, with engineering, but when I take somebody that's not an engineer, I take an orthopedic surgeon and I take them through the 3D Experience Center, it really opens up the possibility of, you know, of life sciences, uh, of that. I mean, you know, what we, what we did also is we have the 3D Experience Center, we, we have a law enforcement training facility, and then we started taking law enforcement officers through there. And guess what? We're using the 3D Experience platform to look at a crime scene. Look at a crime scene differently. We digitize it and we pull it into a virtual environment and look at it that way. So that's one of these unique, fun things that we're doing. So. Great, so hey, John, thanks a lot. Um, what a great story. I know you're just getting started. I had a fabulous time when I was out there. I'm gonna be bringing my customers out there as often as possible because you're doing just fantastic things. And I encourage all of you come see to come it. out to the Innovation Campus, the Innovation Center, and see what the capabilities, see what the future is. So John, thanks a lot. Thanks for that update. Thank you.